Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick video showing you how to shim a saya on a sword. So, let's get started. Periodically, you may have the need to shim a saya. Reason being is because the saya will get too loose. You do not want a saya that's this loose. And as you can see, it's just coming right off. So it's very easy to fix this. All you need is, of course, the sword, but you're also going to need some shimming. And this here is just some veneer like you can buy at the store. For this, you're going to want birch. So this is birch here. You do not want oak or pine or any of those other woods because it's not good for the sword. So get birch. Now this here is iron-on veneer. So I don't use the iron-on because I just don't find that it's the best. So what I just do is I file the glue right off. You're going to need some scissors to cut the veneer and you're going to need some wood glue. Now you may also need a file to adjust the tension after the shim is put in. Now this is an important part right here. Never use sandpaper. Sandpaper is the worst thing for adjusting the tension on a saya. The reason being is because with sandpaper, the little abrasive on the sandpaper can break its way loose. When it breaks its way loose, it gets in the saya, scratches up the blade, no good. So, if you need to adjust the tension, use a file. Don't use sandpaper. First thing we're going to do is remove the sword from the saya and put the sword aside for now. Next, we're going to look at the koiguchi and determine which part is that needs the shim. Now, if the top part of your saya is completely intact, then I recommend just do the bottom right here. But for here, as you can see, the upper part right here is where it is that's being worn, so that's the part we're going to use. Now what I do is I take the veneer, okay, and take an appropriately sized piece, take your scissors, and cut a piece off. Now next thing we're going to do is cut this so that it is appropriately sized for there. So the next thing we're going to do is get this adhesive off the back and what I'm going to use is a file. So take your file and just go back and forth just a few times, just enough to get the glue off. Now we're going to cut this to size to that. So as you can see right there, so we take and we measure it up and then we take our scissors and we cut the shim lengthwise. Be careful not to cut yourself here. Now we take the shim and we check it. Good chances that you're going to have to cut this piece again. So what you can do is if it makes you more comfortable you can hold the shim gently with pliers just so that you're sure not to cut yourself. And from here, cut just a small amount off. That's how little I just cut off. So now we check it again. And we may have to do this a few times. Needs a little bit more. That looks like that's going to fit, and it does. So now is the part that is going to be slightly more dangerous, so be very careful doing this. We take the shim, and we place it on the habaki. What we are doing here is we are making sure that the shim is not too long. So we don't want it touching the edge like this. We want it down here and only touching the habaki. And as you can see, there's a little bit of habaki past the shim, which is fine for this. Now, what I do is to make this easier 
is I take the sword and I put it in the side carefully because it's still going to be loose right now. Then we take our little shim and we put some wood glue on it. And now I'm just going to spread some of this glue over the shim. Make sure not to use too much because we don't want this on the blade. So if need be, use a paper towel or something to wipe some of it off. Take your little spreader and wipe some of it right back off. Now, from here, the way I do this is I open the blade slightly, and typically I don't do this holding this up, but I'm doing this so you can see. I open the blade slightly, and I place the shim right on the habaki, just like that. Now I take and I begin pushing it closed, making sure it all lines up with the saya. And from here, push it closed. Make sure it's in all the way. Now let's sit for however long the drying instructions on your glue says, and it should be good. Now, as I said, you don't want too much glue on there, but you don't want too little either. There's a good little happy medium. What I do is a nice thin coat, because remember, as the sword goes in, it's going to spread. So I do a nice thin coat, uh, but not too thin. As I said, I just make sure it's over it as much as it needs to be. And then after that, you know, it should be fine. And now with the shim in place, as you can see, the sword isn't falling back out. Now I typically don't file the Koiguchi opening after shimming it because typically I don't find the need, but of course if it's holding too tightly then you are going to want to file it slightly. The little test I do for retention is this. I take my left hand and I put it up near the Kurigata. I put my hand on the end of the ska. I turn the sword so that it is upright and I slowly pull my hand away this way. Not this way. Because, and I'm holding the sky now for this, if I pull it away this way, the sword could fall out. But if the saya is loose, and you pull it this way, that's fine, you still have control of the sword. If it's like this, and it doesn't fall out, but you can still take your thumb and push it open like that, then I find that to be the correct retention. I hope this was helpful and informative. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video. See ya!